<laughs> Welcome back to AD Tutoring. In this video, we're going to relate every situation we see in a function, its derivative, and second derivative to each other so we can master these relationships between these functions. So let's go ahead and jump right into it with this worksheet. Our first statement is if f of x, so if a function is increasing, then its derivative is what? And how we can think about this? Well, remember, tangent lines. Tangent lines, the, their slopes represent the instantaneous rate of change. And so if a function is increasing, that means that its tangent line slope must be positive. And because the slope of the tangent line represents a derivative, if it's positive, we can represent that with greater than zero. Similarly, if we're dealing with a function that's decreasing, then its derivative must be negative. Because remember, the derivative represents the instantaneous rate of change of a function. And so yes, it will be negative or less than zero. Up next, let's take a look at if f of x has a local minimum. If it has a local minimum, then what's going on with f prime of x? Well, the way that we can think about this is, remember, if a function has a local minimum, in earlier videos we explored this topic, if it has a local minimum, this means that the function has to be concave up. It has to be concave up. So in that sense, we're talking about the second derivative, f double prime. So if du f double prime is uh, positive because it's a concave up, so if it's greater than zero, then this means that f prime must be increasing. That means that f prime has to be increasing, or the slope of the tangent line on f must be increasing, and that should make sense. Let's take a quick look at this graph here. Look at this graph and its tangent line. It has a local minimum. Take a look at that slope it is increasing. It goes from very negative, kind of negative, horizontal, kind of positive, very positive. So the slope is increasing. And so therefore, we can go ahead and state that because f of x is a local minimum, its derivative is increasing. That is the statement that we can make. And very similar, um, that's going to be coming up right here in this problem coming up. But first, let's see if f of x has a local minimum, then its second derivative, we just spoke about that, its second derivative if it has a local minimum, well, it's concave up at this point, which means that its second derivative is positive. Up next, if f has a local maximum, then what's going on with its, with its derivative? Well, this is very similar to these last two that we just saw. Remember, if it has a local maximum, then this means that the derivative or the second derivative needs to be negative because if it is a local maximum it must be concave down at this point so we know that the second derivative is less than zero and what does this mean well if we're looking at the derivative the first derivative well that means that f prime has to be decreasing it has to be decreasing because if we think about it if a function is decreasing if you were to analyze its derivative, its, de its derivative would be negative. So since we're looking at the first derivative and it's decreasing, the second derivative will be less than zero, will be less than zero. And so yeah, that should make total sense. Like I said, f double prime should be negative because it's a local maximum. It's concave down. And because it's concave down, then that means that f prime has to, has to be decreasing because for us to take its derivative, we should get a negative result. And so yeah, if it has a local maximum, then f prime is decreasing. And we've just answered the next question as well. If it has a local maximum, then the second derivative will be less than zero. Let me go ahead and take a second just to erase all of this good stuff. That way I have more space to work with. All over here. All right, so up next, let's take a look at our next problem. If f of x is concave up, then its derivative is what? Well, let's go ahead and just think about that for a second. If it's concave up, this means that the second derivative must be positive. And for the second derivative to be positive, the first derivative needs to be increasing. It needs to be increasing. So there it is. f prime of x is increasing if it is concave up. If f of x is concave down, then its derivative needs to be decreasing. It needs to be decreasing. 
And again, the same reasoning can be applied because if it's concave down, the second derivative is negative. For the second derivative to be negative, this means the first derivative needs to be decreasing. Because remember, the derivative represents the instantaneous rate of change of a function. And so if the derivative is decreasing, then if you take the derivative of the first derivative, you'll get the second derivative. And if you take a derivative of a decreasing function, well, that means that its second derivative will be negative. It will be negative. So I hope that makes sense. Because coming up here, if we have a function that's concave up, then its second derivative, like we said, needs to be positive. We've stated this round and round and round. Up next, if a function is concave down, then its second derivative needs to be negative. So these two should have been nice and easy for us to follow along with. Next, if f prime of x, so if f prime is increasing, then its second derivative is what? Now let's take a second. If any function is increasing, then its derivative will be positive. Just because we're dealing with f prime doesn't mean it makes f double prime any different. f double prime is just the derivative of f prime. And so the derivative of an increasing function will be greater than zero. Next, if f prime is decreasing, then the derivative of f prime will be what? Or the second derivative will be what? Again, same concept. Don't be afraid of just dealing with a, a derivative as opposed to the base function. If we have a function that's decreasing, then its derivative will be negative. Will be negative. Next, if f prime of x is increasing, then what's going on with f of x? Well, again, let's go ahead and go off to the side and think about that. If f prime of x is increasing, then its derivative must be positive. So f double prime will be positive along that interval. If a function is positive along, or if the second derivative is positive, this means that the base function should be concave up. And we've gone, that, we've gone backwards with this. We've, we've said earlier that if the second derivative is positive, it will be concave up. And we also stated that if a function is concave up right here, then its derivative, the first derivative, is increasing. And so the second derivative will be positive. And so we can come back and tie that all back in. So if a function's derivative is increasing, then therefore the function itself must be concave up. Lastly, if a derivative is decreasing, then the base function will be what? Well, if the derivative is decreasing, the second derivative will be negative, which means that the base function must be concave down along that interval, just like that. And we're all done with this worksheet. But I want to go ahead and take a second to look at some more difficult examples because these uh, this worksheet uh, should have been it should have made sense. I know we are still on the verge of mastering these topics, but for the most part, most of these should have made sense. You should be able to relate f f prime and f double prime together at any point. Let's say we were looking at the let's say the thirteenth derivative of f. So let's say the thirteenth derivative of f is concave. Uh, let's say up, concave up. So what other statements would we be able to make based off of this one statement? So if the if the thirteenth derivative is concave up, well, let's think about it. If the second derivative of a function is positive, that means that the base function will be concave up. And again, if a function is concave up, its second derivative will be positive. And so because we know that this function is concave up, then its second derivative must be positive. So we can go ahead and state that, okay, the second derivative of the 13th would be 14th, 15th. So that would be f, the 15th derivative of f will be greater than zero. Another statement we can make, remember, if a function is concave up, that means its derivative must be increasing because for its derivative to be increasing, that would lead to the second derivative being positive. So that should make sense. So then the first derivative of f to the 13th, or the 13th derivative, 
should be the 14th derivative of x. And that means that the 14th derivative is increasing. And this should make sense. I really hope it does. Let me know if it doesn't. I'll make another video. Up next, let's go ahead and say we're dealing with another function. So let's go ahead and erase this very quickly. Let's go ahead and just erase that nice and quickly. So lastly, let's say we have a function's 33rd derivative. And let's say this function's 33rd derivative is positive. Let's say it's function's 33rd derivative is positive. Well, what would that mean? Well, if a function's 33rd derivative is positive, what can we state about that? Well, then for it to be positive, we know that the derivative beforehand or the you know the, the function beforehand, so let's say f to the 32nd, so the 32nd derivative of f, it should be increasing. It should be increasing. Because if it's increasing, if you take the derivative, it's going to be positive. So that should make sense. And if we work backwards one more step, let's say we wanted to talk about the 31st derivative. Well, if this is positive, if, this, if the 31st second derivative is positive, well, that means that the, the, the function's 31st derivative is concave up. Is concave up up. Now let's go over one last example. Let's say we're dealing with the, let's go ahead and say the, 40th, the 47th derivative of a function. Let's say the 47th derivative of a function is, let's go ahead and say that it is increasing. Or then let's go ahead and say it's decreasing. So the 47th derivative is decreasing. All right. So what does this mean? Well, if the 47th derivative is decreasing, well, this should automatically mean that the, that the next derivative is negative. So if any function is decreasing along some interval, well, then its derivative will be negative. So the 48th derivative of x is less than 0. Well, let's see. If this function is decreasing, and so that would mean that the second derivative is negative, or the next derivative, sorry, the next derivative is negative, well, what, that, what does that mean for, let's say, the 46th derivative? So the 46th derivative of x, well, if the second derivative of the 46th derivative is negative, this means that the 46th derivative must be concave down. And there we go. If you were able to follow along and comprehend these relationships, you have officially begun mastering curve analysis. And what this means is that we can now start dominating this conversation algebraically and then begin to purposefully apply the derivative. And in these upcoming topics, we'll be dealing with things like related rates and optimization where your understanding of these relationships is critical. And so if you need to watch this again, please feel free and do so, as well as re-watch these past videos. In the next video, we'll be looking at how to analyze a curve algebraically. And even if you kind of understand what's going on now, the next video will sound like common sense to you. So until then, keep practicing these relationships. It's crucial. And then I'll see you in the next video.